A bride canceled her wedding and dumped her fiance after guests refused to pay an entrance fee of $1,500 each. She explained her decision in a lengthy Facebook post, and boy was this Facebook post a ride. The woman and her ex-fiancé had saved up $1,500 for the wedding, but because their love was like a fairy tale, they wanted an extravagant blowout wedding. She wanted to be a Kardashian for a day. They were torn between two wedding venues, but a psychic pushed them to choose a more expensive venue in Aruba that would cost around $60,000. So this couple requested that each guest give them $1,500 in cash to pay off their wedding. Because how could they have their dream wedding without proper funding? The bride didn't think this was out of line at all. Only eight people RSVP'd to this wedding and paid the $1,500, which made this woman and her ex-fiance livid. When it became clear they weren't going to get their dream wedding, the ex-fiancé suggested they get married in Vegas, which caused the bride-to-be to have a panic attack. The maid of honor and then slowly the rest of the bridal party dropped out of this wedding and this woman refused to give anyone a refund. According to The Knot, the average spent on a wedding gift is about $160, not $1,500 in cash to cover an extravagant dream wedding. Guests should give gifts in the price range they can afford and should not feel pressured to spend beyond their means. What would you do if you were invited to a wedding with an entrance fee? A woman's neighbor demanded that she take care of her newborn because she doesn't have a job. The woman, named Kayla Baker, shared her frustrating dilemma on TikTok. Her neighbor thought that since Baker was a stay-at-home mom, she could watch her newborn for four days a week, 12 hours a day, for free. Yeah, no thanks, hard pass. Baker was kind enough to lend a helping hand to her neighbor in the past, but on this one, she had to put her foot down. She told her neighbor she could not watch the baby from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., but when Monday morning rolled around, the neighbor arrived at her doorstep with the baby. Due to a language barrier, they had to converse using Google Translate, and the neighbor told Baker, you are home. She said since Baker didn't have a job, she should be able to look after the baby. The neighbor said it was a small favor, but watching a baby for 12 hours for free is not a small thing. Not at all. Just because they're home, stay-at-home moms should not be expected to watch anyone else's children, especially not for free. Being a stay-at-home mom is a full-time job in and of itself, and newborns require intensive care. There's nothing wrong with asking for help, not demanding, asking. And there's also nothing wrong with saying no. Employees at a Goodwill store refused to donate a pair of shoes to a homeless woman when a police officer asked them to. The police officer explained his situation to the woman behind the counter, saying that there was a homeless woman at a gas station down the street without any shoes and asked if they would be able to help. Employees at the Goodwill talked it over and said that they were not allowed. The officer then asked if they had any shoes for sale and an employee showed him to the shoe section where he picked out a pair of flip-flops and purchased them for the homeless woman. People were very upset that the store refused to help this homeless woman, calling into question how charitable the charity really is. And there is plenty of controversy surrounding Goodwill. Country Living did a deep dive into why people feel this way and found that the criticisms likely stem from a 2005 email that was later turned into a graphic called Think Before You Donate. The email claimed that the CEO is a millionaire who actually profits off of items sold in stores. But Goodwill is, in fact, a nonprofit. That doesn't mean, though, that everything you donate goes straight into stores and stays there for shoppers. Goodwill has to stay on top of its inventory, so items unsold after four weeks make a stop at a Goodwill outlet store. After the outlet store, if unsold, items go to textile recycling organizations and then landfills. Goodwill does ultimately seem to have good intentions, but the inability to donate a pair of simple flip-flops does certainly raise some eyebrows. When a mom on TikTok showed off a recent Christmas shopping haul, she probably wasn't expecting the blowback she received. Patience, who goes by Trailer Park Pretty here on the app, showed off some of the clothes and toys that she picked up in advance to beat the holiday rush. Nothing she bought was extravagant or high priced, but that didn't stop people from making wild assumptions and using them as a basis to criticize her. Trailer Park Pretty was told that if she would just stop shopping so much, she could afford a real home. First of all, what is a real home? And be very specific now, because I bet your answer will be very revealing about your own 
classism and bigotry. But more importantly, what economy do people think we're living in? That a pair of $12 boots and an $8 playset are sinking someone into intractable poverty. The median home price in America right now is $416,000, for God's sake. An $8 playset makes no difference. Just like avocado toast makes no difference when people try to say that's the reason you can't afford a home. And furthermore, the suggestion that poor kids don't deserve to have Christmas gifts is outright sadistic. But in Patience's case, these criticisms don't even make sense. Her family may live a simple life, but it's not like they're living in squalor. Their home, which they own, is nicer and more spacious than any apartment I've ever lived in in the fanciest cities in this entire country. She and her husband have created a comfortable, stable life for their two daughters. In a country and economy where doing so is increasingly impossible for most people. Their home is a real home, and it's one in which her daughters are growing up knowing they're safe and loved. And there isn't a fancy house with a white picket fence in any cul-de-sac in the world that can do all that. A dad flipped out after his five-year-old son came home from kindergarten with his nails painted. The mom isn't sure how to respond to her husband's attitude and posted to the parenting subreddit saying that her husband ruined her son's joy. The kindergarten class arranged for a pretend nail salon and allowed all of the kids the opportunity to have their nails painted. And this little boy was so excited to come home with his painted nails. When dad came home, he went on a rant saying that it was disgusting that his son's nails were painted and that painting nails was only allowed for women and girls. The son's excitement turned to dismay at his father's anger and this mom is heartbroken for her son. People on Reddit agreed that this mom needs to comfort and validate her son against her husband's views on masculinity. Traditional gender norms view certain activities and choices as being reserved exclusively for one gender. Allowing boys to paint their nails challenges these stereotypes and sends a powerful message that there's no such thing as girl things and boy things. And to feel safe, children need to know that their individuality and self-expression are respected by their parents. A straight single mom is seeking another straight single mom to marry. And honestly, her offer doesn't sound half bad. TikToker Mary Elizabeth Fabian put out a call to other women who are also raising kids on their own, asking for a whole new sort of relationship, one that is purely platonic and based on mutual support. Fabian listed all kinds of benefits that another single mom would get if they married her, from childcare help to the great health insurance she has with a very low copay. In this economy? Heck, lady, I'll marry you. Although that kind of defeats the whole point, doesn't it? She even included in her deal the one thing moms want most but never seemed to get time alone suggesting that she and her platonic mom partner could trade off weekends away a couple times a year to rejuvenate and she promises one other thing that moms are finding all too rare nowadays a consistent presence of practical and emotional support fabian's video really took off and she received thousands of comments which highlights just how many women are in need of this kind of support especially single moms whom fabian says are particularly undervalued and undersupported. but there's something revolutionary to fabian's proposal too a new kind of relationship structure that emphasizes platonic support over romance. It's kind of radical in a way. It puts mutual aid and community building at the forefront. It's a sort of reconfiguration of the village it takes to raise a child. And the massive response she receives shows just how much people are craving those things nowadays. Who knows, Fabian really might find herself marching down the proverbial aisle soon. And it won't really be a surprise if lots of other moms follow in her footsteps. Did any of you just... Ugh. It's like nails on a chalkboard. Your eyes did not deceive you. TikTok creator Samantha Menapace just filed her tooth with a nail file. People in the comments were concerned, saying that a slip of that file could require more extensive and expensive repair by a dentist. While it's maybe not recommended to use this method to fix minor cosmetic details on your teeth, the truth of the matter is that many in the United States simply can't afford dental care. Teeth are not covered by most health insurance plans, making them something of luxury bones that require extra costs to maintain. And even routine dental care can cost anywhere from $60 to $2,000 out of pocket, and those costs continue to rise. An estimated 74 million Americans don't have dental insurance. While it's easy to say that Menape should just go to the dentist and have her tooth filed, it's also important to recognize that dental care, especially of the cosmetic variety is out of reach for many. 
Imagine going through the McDonald's drive-thru and berating the person in the window for not delivering your order enthusiastically enough. That's what happened in a video from 2021 that's making the rounds again on Reddit. A man filmed himself berating a McDonald's employee in the middle of the night, and it highlights everything wrong with how we tend to think about people who work in supposedly menial jobs. A man tells the employee to find a different profession if he doesn't like working at McDonald's, and then he insults his intelligence, calling him incompetent because he works in fast food. He then hurls profanity at the worker and tells him that he hates being served by him every time he comes to the drive through saying that he, quote, makes me sick. And of course, all the employee can do is just sit there and take it. Because of course, if he'd retaliated or responded in any way at all, most likely, he would have been fired. But the look of exhausted rage in his eyes is unmistakable. The notion that people working in fast food can simply go get another job is absurd. As is, frankly, the suggestion that they owe it to anyone to do anything more than the bare minimum while they're at work. Almost no one is working in fast food because they want to be there. It is a grueling job where you're often rushed and on your feet for hours at a time, while also routinely being denied basic accommodations like adequate breaks and mealtimes. The fast food industry is rife with abuse, and fast food companies, including McDonald's, are routinely sued for wage theft and even violations of child labor laws so extreme that the federal government gets involved. And that's before we even get to the fact that the pay is almost universally inadequate. A living wage in fast food is vanishingly rare, so much so that many fast food workers are homeless. Instead, fast food workers are paid by being dehumanized by customers like this. Another thing fast food companies are routinely sued for. It doesn't matter how bad the service might be. It costs you absolutely nothing to treat someone with respect while outsourcing your eating habits to abused workers making a pittance. Leave them alone and go eat your burger. A tip left a gig worker crying, and for once, it's in a good way. When a DoorDash driver got a $100 tip on Christmas Eve, they were downright shocked. So much so, they left a note for the customer named Vivica. Vivica, in turn, posted the letter to the Made Me Smile subreddit, and in it, the driver said they were so shocked by the tip, they cried the whole way home. The driver wrote that they had just started working for DoorDash due to a job loss, and had decided to work on Christmas Eve in order to buy a tank of gas. Vivica was the last order of the night, and her generosity, $100 on an order that only totaled 60 bucks, left the the Dasher exceedingly grateful. Of course, we've all heard the statistic that the average American can't even afford a $400 emergency expense. So an extra hundred bucks really makes a difference. And the Door Dasher said that when they got home, they used Vivica's act of goodwill to teach their kids a lesson about the importance of kindness and generosity. Many people on Reddit were deeply moved by the story, but others responded with calls for restaurant and gig workers to be paid more fairly and treated with more respect. Like we talk about all the time, tipping is far from a perfect system. But until things change, it's the system we have, so it's always appropriate to tip your service workers for a job well done. And when you can, offer a little extra kindness. As Vivica showed, it really can go a long way. A pregnant woman sat on a man's hand on a bus because he refused to give up that seat. This woman, who was eight months pregnant at the time, took to the Am I the A-hole subreddit to ask if she was in the wrong. When she got on the bus to commute to work, she saw the empty seat, but then saw the man's hand resting on it. She asked him to move his hand, at which point he replied, that seat was taken. So she did what any normal person would do. She sat on his hand. At that point, everyone on the bus was looking at them, and even after getting off the bus, she felt some shame for what she had done. Her husband took the man's side, saying that what she had done was totally inappropriate, but Reddit had her back. Instances like this one are unfortunately quite common. According to a 2018 poll of 2,000 UK citizens, only 60% of people believe that it's necessary to give up a seat to a pregnant woman on public transportation. And 2022 research by the Federal Transit Administration found that overcrowding and non-compliance with courtesy seating policy add discomfort and increased risk for pregnant women riding transit. Etiquette dictates that a pregnant woman can ask for an occupied seat on public transit, even if that seat is only occupied by a hand. What would you do in this woman's situation? A grandmother threw the gift she bought for her granddaughter out on the lawn after the granddaughter refused to cuddle with her. In a TikTok video, Rini Spencer shared the story. The granddaughter had said, no thank you, please don't snuggle with me over and over to the grandmother until the granddaughter started crying. The grandmother ignored the child's pleas and said that the granddaughter would have to get used to the way that she shows affection. Spencer then shared an image of toys scattered across the lawn, the toys the grandmother had bought for the child. After the incident, Spencer decided to keep her mother from the child and go no contact. She believes it's her duty as a mother to protect her children from anyone overstepping 
overstepping their boundaries. Dr. Dan Peters told parents that the grandmother's refusal to respect boundaries and her subsequent outburst are two clear signs of narcissism. Experts agree that creating space between children and narcissistic relatives is key to protecting the children. The first steps in dealing with a narcissistic relative can be setting clear boundaries, which this little girl clearly tried to do. But that may not be enough, and in that case, experts suggest going no contact. You don't owe anyone family included, access to you or your child if they cannot respect your boundaries. A young girl got a nail treatment and failed to bring any form of payment, so the nail technician took her shoes as collateral. A video posted to TikTok by The Thai Life shows the confrontation between the nail tech and the girl's mom. He explained that since she didn't bring in any money to pay or her wallet or phone, he had to take something in collateral. The mom angrily informed him that it was raining the day he took her daughter's shoes and she had to walk home barefoot in the rain. He reminded this mom that the weather was not his fault, but rather it was the woman's daughter's fault for not paying in the first place. She asked for the shoes back, but the nail tech asked for the $120 he was owed. She refused to pay, so he refused to give back the shoes. Most people sided with the nail tech's decision to take the shoes. While it's not all that common for nail technicians to seize footwear for non-payment, they are legally allowed to get the police involved in order to get their financial compensation. If children are going to locations providing customer service unsupervised, it's a good idea for parents to make sure they have cash, card, or some form of payment on them, or at least their cell phone on them, so they can contact their parents should they encounter a payment problem. Otherwise, they may just have to walk home barefoot in the rain. A woman started a heated debate on social media after she snapped at a parent whose child got too close to her service dog. Lynn Schmidt took to Twitter to share what happened when she was out with her service dog named Zoe. A toddler charged toward them, intrigued by the dog. Schmidt put herself between Zoe and the toddler, reminding the child not to run up to dogs that they don't know. The child's mother attempted to excuse her behavior by saying that she was only three. So Schmidt clapped back, if she isn't on voice recall, maybe she should be leashed? Oh boy, did people on Online have opinions. Some people agreed with Schmidt, noting that a child's age is not an excuse for them to act as they please and that three-year-olds can be taught. Even people who were leashed as kids chimed in saying that they agree with leashing children who are easily distractible. However, others believe that Schmidt's remarks were a bit harsh and that she could have demonstrated more grace toward the mother and child and respectfully, have you ever met a three-year-old? While dogs are adorable and the first instinct may be to pet one when you see it in public, it's never okay to pet a dog without its owner's permission. It's also important to keep in mind that the dog could be a service animal who's actively on the job. So when out in public with the child, if they happen to spot a dog with its owner, it's important to not let them touch animals they do not know without the owner's permission first. A man's wife chose Taylor Swift over him, so he chose divorce. He took to Reddit, where he shared that his wife was certifiably obsessed with Taylor Swift, playing her music 24-7 and wallpapering their home and all things T-Swift. But he was left wondering who was really number one in his wife's life when the couple had a big celebration planned for their fifth wedding anniversary. And the wife had managed to score heiress to her tickets for the exact same night. Her husband told her she could just sell the tickets, but she said no, saying it was a once in a life lifetime opportunity. They had already spent a lot of money on the celebration and vow renewal. They argued for days before he finally offered up an ultimatum, Taylor Swift or me. The wife made a surprising decision saying that if he couldn't understand her love of Taylor Swift, maybe they were better off apart. He then kicked her out of the house and was left wondering if he did the right thing. Some said they understood where the wife was coming from. After all, heiress tour tickets were notoriously hard to obtain. After all, there was only an estimated 5% chance of getting tickets and that's if you had pre-sale access and nobody can forget that Ticketmaster debacle from last year. So although it may sound a little bananas, it really was his wife telling the truth when she said it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. On the other hand, celebrity worship syndrome is a real thing and it can drive a wedge between couples to where divorce becomes a reality. Regardless of who was in the right, it's important to remember who is really most important in your life and to make sure that they know it. A dad shared his son's perfect response when another kid told him boys can't wear nail polish. Apparently they can, because he is. The dad, named Aaron, had his son Tommy show off his dark blue painted nails in a TikTok video. The dad asked his son to share what happened at football practice that day. And Tommy launched into his story about how another kid's mom said only girls could wear nail polish. Tommy's response was, 
chef's kiss. He said, your mom's only mad because I got more taste. Nailed it. You see what I did there? Because nails. I know. Thank you so much. The comeback, of course, has gotten lots of applause, but so has Aaron for supporting his son without judgment and allowing him to be confident in his choices. And in so doing, he allowed Tommy to show everyone that kids can and do contain multitudes and they don't have to be bound by old fashioned gender rules. Sure, it's a cute little video, but it's also a masterclass on how to make a kid feel confident enough to stand up to someone who insults him because his dad's unconditional support has allowed him to flourish. The video sends a clear and unwavering message. Be who you want to be, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. A woman suddenly quit her waitressing job after her boss accused her of being on drugs. In a TikTok video, Abby Gabo explained that her manager had wrongfully rifled through her personal belongings while she was at work and found an insulin syringe in her bag. Not understanding what it was at first, the manager pulled one of the restaurant hosts aside and asked them to call the police, while he confronted Gabo and asked her why she was bringing a syringe to work. Her boss said, you don't look like you'd have these, and Gabo was naturally extremely confused because her boss was outright accusing her of being on drugs. I'd be pretty confused too, but hey, that's just me. Gabo told her boss that she has diabetes, which she says he already knew, so if by drugs he meant life-saving ones? Yeah, sure, drugs. Who? The manager refused to believe her, saying that his diabetic niece uses an insulin pump rather than syringes. Fun fact of the day, pumps also require syringes. Also, newsflash, medication's expensive and not everyone with diabetes can afford an insulin pump. Many in the comments pointed out that not only was it incredibly disrespectful of Gabo's boss to rifle through her belongings, but jumped to conclusions instead of listening to her. It's important in any workplace for management to respect their employees' privacy and personal space. Gabo's boss displayed a lack of professionalism and a lack of trust in an employee. Her decision to quit on the spot is the best response to this kind of mistreatment. A woman was frightened when her date showed up at her house after she refused to split the restaurant bill. Fran, who posted about the experience in a since-deleted TikTok video, was on a date with a man that she hadn't met previously. He ordered $200 more food than she did and wanted to split the bill in half. So she went to the bathroom and never came back. After she got home, she sent him money for her portion of the meal through Venmo. She never told him where she lived, but somehow he found her address and showed up at her front door. She had to call security to get him escorted out of the building. Incidents like the one Fran described often contribute to the fear and unease that many women feel just existing in their everyday lives. Research shows that at least one in eight women have been stalked, with one in three women experiencing some form of gender-based violence. While Fran was able to defuse the situation and have the man escorted from her building, thousands of similar stories have ended tragically for women. Experiences like Fran's highlight the need for a safer society. They should never be a normal or inevitable part of a woman's life. A woman explains the genius and hilarious way that she intentionally stuns men into not wanting a second date with her. If she's on a first date and she decides she is not interested in another, Joe Brunza tries to convince her dates that the moon is fake. As soon as she comes to the realization that she's not interested, she spends the rest of the date trying to convince the other person that she doesn't believe the moon is real. Not the moon landing, mind you. Like the actual moon itself. Of course, she actually believes in the moon in real life. She finds it funny to turn what was likely a terrible evening and probably looked a whole lot like that into something humorous, at, at least for her. The video's caption says they're typically too stunned to argue back. Her tactic does beg the question of whether people should give explanations if they're no longer interested in their date. Many relationship experts do agree that it's best to be upfront and honest with someone. According to life coach Mitzi Bachman, the best way to let someone down nicely is to speak from your own perspective, telling them, I know that I'm looking for something different, or I don't feel connected to you. Don't attack them personally or judge them, but speak about your own needs to let someone down. If it's safe to do so, it's always best to treat the people you're dating with the same kind of respect you'd want them treating you with. Come on, it's the golden rule. A woman on TikTok explained what mothers-in-law often don't get about pushing their way into the delivery room. 
It's that birth is not a spectator event. The woman who goes by at Organically Maddie on TikTok can't believe that there's a subset of the population that genuinely believes they have the right to attend the birth of a child that they did not help create. She didn't even know it was an issue until she started getting messages from other women who had to fight to ensure that their labor and delivery did not turn into a spectator event. Apparently mothers and mothers-in-law are pretty terrible offenders when it comes to insisting on being present for their grandchildren's births. Do they even know what labor and delivery consists of, it's not something that most women want a large crowd in attendance for. According to the National Institute of Health, 18% of women did not want companionship during labor, and a full 63% did not desire it during delivery. The reasons? embarrassment, fear of gossip, and abuse. The last thing a woman needs to worry about in childbirth is how they are being perceived by other people. Childbirth is just as much about the mother as it is about the baby and her needs must be considered. So grandma and everyone else, if requested, please wait in the hospital lobby to catch a glimpse of baby after they're born.